Yo, what's up, guys? Today's video, I'm going to show you guys my second place Vanadium deck profile at the Remote Regional. Uh, it was a blast. In fact, I didn't lose a game until the second last round, and I should have finished first. A very, my one misplay all tournament cost me winning the whole event, and that one misplay wouldn't make it, so I got I, I won all my matches 2-0 with the exception of a one game, but then I, my mistake turned it into a reverse sweep. Anyways, I'm going to explain everything on the deck. I'm going to explain the differences for... Uh, new format post a gov when the cards come out and how you're gonna fix the deck the sponsor of today's video is none other than myself brand new synchro play mat get your synchro play mats right now in honor of vice star frost <laughs> and all the manadiums synchro in style we're gonna be releasing a brand new play mat for every single summoning mechanic in the game that's synchro xyz fusion ritual and pendulum they're all going to be coming soon this is the very first in the collection this is the synchro in style play mat get yours now down in the description below with that being said let's get straight into this video and make no mistake about it manadium is the best deck this format and it's especially the best deck post the gov there's no other deck not even rescue ace that gets such a massive boost post the gov which comes out in about two weeks so pay close attention to this video to gonna explain a lot of stuff for post to god as well. This is the best deck this format, and I refuse to believe otherwise. People just don't understand how to play it or play against it whatsoever. The only way to stop this deck is draw and lockbird. And if you don't have that droll and shit card, then you're getting absolutely obliterated. There's a reason why I 2 0 every single one of my opponents. It's extremely you can't lose first or second, and I'll explain why in the deck profile. Let's go. We're going to start with the most important card in the deck, and that is Vsys Starfrost. In fact, this card is so important in this deck that I even played Pearlerino to search it. But not just because you're playing four copies of Isis Starfrost, but this way you have a card in Thrust, Terraforming, to be able to search Vysis that is not with Calarium or Rykphobia, which is vital. Because a lot of the times you want Calarium to be searching your Manadiums, and you want your Rykphobia to be searching your right card. And Vsys Armatara can search... Pearl Arena, which is vital in this combo. There's a lot of times going second where if your opponent can stop the Vices from being engraved, you lose. And the reason why the deck's so powerful and it breaks any board is because you're using double Astrolog going second every single turn. And you're utilizing the access to Vices Star Press to do that. So make sure you're playing Pearl Arena in any Manadium deck. The fact that Vices and Murtara searches it and you can access it through your whole deck this is absolutely vital. And it is a massive reason of why I'm winning a lot of the games. Make sure to do that. Next, I'm playing three right card. A lot of people play one or two. I The Scareclaw engine is what wins you the whole game. And you're going to notice as we continue on to this profile that there's just so many cards that just win you the whole game. And none of these are bad cards. They're all great cards to draw. And two of each of these. So this is the Scareclaw engine that you play. And the reason why is that hard drawing the right card makes it so you're playing around interruption so well. And you need more starters in the deck. This is one the best starter. Better than Roomheart. Because this will have you, you always want to save the room heart in your hand. So it's very easy, but to, if you play against a stupid Manadium player, you could win quite easily by them making stupid mistakes. But our game plan is simple, actually. You always keep room heart in hand no matter what. You never normal the room heart. You let them, especially going second, try and stop your meek or right heart, and that's when you chain the room heart to obliterate them. So try and save the room heart for the very last. And you play this with a Scareclaw deck, uh, Scareclaw engine, super heavy. You're like too light heart. And a lot of the times going second, they're going to want to stop your light heart. So when they try and stop your light heart, you literally play two right phobia. And you get access to right phobia every single game. And that's how you make sure to get the OTKs. This deck OTKs most games. Three Meek, do not play Torrid. This, like, they suck. Meek is the, just, that's all you need. Just the fact that you get access to the level twos, Meek, this is plenty. Tor, like, you don't want to open Meek. You don't actually want to open If you open it, sure, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's still a good card. Same with Arrival. Arrival, at first I thought the balls were shit and that Arrival was shit. But no, dude, in this deck, Arrival is amazing because it's an extender that your opponent cannot calculate for. That's the same idea with Room Heart. So when they're calculating and stop your board going second, they're not calculating for the Room Heart. They're not calculating for the hard drawn Arrival. They're not calculating for the shit in the hand. So this is why it's vital to play cards like this. So Torrid is just absolutely redundant. The only reason you're having these three, you just pick any of the balls that are the best. And obviously Meek is the best because you could modulate the levels. Next, an engine that no one plays. You guys are ridiculous. I've been on this engine for the last two formats in Scareclaw. That's the Kishtira engine. This is vital. I can't trust this enough. 
Your opponent's thinking in their head, oh, yeah, right heart, yeah, room heart, yeah. They, they, they're they not understanding that if you can go to your Scareclaw Light Heart, that's 8,000 damage, access code, Astralod, pop five cards. Like, it's it's insane. And the fact that Fenrir is, for one, it's a defensive card. For two, you're playing five Fenrirs. For three, it searches your full Scareclaw combo. And they cannot deal with it. And you're playing five defensive cards on the spot. So the reason why the deck is so powerful is that it plays 14 go second cards. 14. Five that are actually end up being engine. So going second, you only have nine bricks. And out of those nine, two of them, which is talents, I'll get to it later, could draw you two. Henceforth, it's a pot of greed going second. So you're really playing going second, only seven like actual non-engine, despite playing 14. That's what makes this deck so busted and why I'm 2 0 everybody. I only won two dice rolls the whole tournament, and I'm 2 0 everyone. People think Vanadium is not good going second. Bro, it's not just good going second. It's the best deck going second. There's The amount of times I OTK'd full unchained boards with just engine it was ridiculous. You need to play these five, specifically 3-1-1. The reason why is post side deck, you're playing three thrust. So you're actually... Playing eight ways to fend rear post side, but really it's just four. So to have that synergy, to be able to send and variability to get whatever you want, depending on the scenario, it is why this deck is so insane. And terraforming is, is so important to play in the deck because of thrust. Thrust is always searching terraforming or rota going second. Almost rarely does it search the board breaker because their board is already broken. Field spells now. Uh, the three calariums. Of course, you need to play this. And it, now, if you look at the field spell engine, you're playing every single planet, bro. Like, the, the amount of broken cards you have in this deck, and my opponent's always like, oh, you, they're always like, oh, after I 2 all their ass, oh, you open so broken, bro. What could you do? You open three boy breakers and three planets. Bro, that's the deck. That's the point. You guys stick to drawing your Ash Blossom and Imperm. I'm going to stick to putting up five negates through your Ash and Imperm. But that, that Ash and Imperm was just thrust and fucking even enemy controller, you were breaking the entire board and then OTKing their ass. So as far as the field spells you're playing, uh, you're playing these. And the idea behind it is you need specifically two of these. So if you draw it, it doesn't matter. It's fine. But you need two because if they stop your first light heart, you need to be able to search the other. Or on top of that, it's just you you get it as follow-ups. This is the best follow-up to have in your hand, in your thing, especially with two arrival in deck. And Calarium is the card you always want to hard draw. It's just absolutely busted. And one of each of these planets. Because these planets are searchable by Terraforming and Thrust. That's very specifically where you're playing one of each of these. And Perlerino is searchable by Amritara. And that's the main reason. Never side this card out. If you're going to side out a Vice of Starfrost, side out the third Vice of Starfrost. Never, ever side out Perlerino. Going second, you have to understand the actual logistics of breaking a board. It's all based on Vicious Astrolab. So without Vice of Starfrost, you can't do it. Post the God, we have Vice of Samsara, which is absurd in this deck. You should be playing three. That card is cracked. But in, even after then, what I'm doing when I get three Vice of Samsara is I'm playing one Perlerino, two Vices. But even then, you miss the third Vices. These come up. This is Vice of Starfrost is the deck. Everything else is just there as a bonus. This is the whole deck. You, I can't stress this enough. This is without Perlerino, this deck loses so much insane value because going second, you can, you're able, especially with level modulation. A lot of people don't understand this trick. We won't need to do this when Chula Scuda comes out in Agav, but people don't understand what you can do going second. Going second, if you have no ways to break a board and you're really missing you, you six card combo to your opponent, you have nothing but one room heart. You go room heart, search meek, special meek in attack position, enter battle, attack, crash. Calarium, special level two, special at level four. Room heart and the level four go into Pearl, uh, go into uh, Vice of Amritara, search Perlerino because you already use Calarium. You already use Right Phobia, so you need another one. I know Calarium and, and and Right Phobia search Vices, but there's scenarios where they either get negated, they get ashed, they get stopped. They needed to search Scareclaw, they needed to search uh, Manadium. You need this to search. This is how you push through boards. Post the Gov and now nothing changes. Can't stress enough, Perlerino is MVP, it never came out of my deck. Uh, next, Rota as well. You absolutely need to play it. And the thought of like, oh, Triff, all these spells, you're, you're going to get drolled. Yeah, buddy, you better have it. If you, I do not get drolled, you're losing the game. It doesn't matter what collection of negates you have. The amount of six negate boards I OTK through with maybe like a fucking enemy controller is the only defensive card. It's ridiculous. Yes, we play enemy controller. It's insane in this deck. 
it, it's insane how good this deck is going second. So what you need to do is, if you know, I play the deck as if, all right, you better have Droll. Because if you don't have Droll, you're going to absolutely lose the game. And post side, you play one called by. And post the Gav, I'm actually playing a Horus engine because you have three outs to Droll with the Horus engine. So you're going to have four outs to Droll when your opponent only has three Droll. That's if they even play it because it's not that popular. And these one ofs are mandatory, not just because they're broken, but Thrust is a massive part of this deck. People don't understand the, the power level of, of Thrust. Going second, Thrust says search any card in your deck. It's better than Prosperity going second. It literally says search for any card in your deck going second. That That is not a fair card. Like, you need to have this card in your deck going second at all times, no matter what. You're breaking any board. And if you don't have enough board breakers, this is searching the board breaker. Uh, I, I'm not maining the thrust though because going first it's a very bad card. So it's always in every matchup going second except Salamangrader, Dex that don't have monster effects. Uh, so you need these to, uh, to, for the best cards to search with the thrust. Uh, sometimes as well you could thrust into an abscission if you could find a way to get it to the field uh, to destroy it if you really need an extender. Uh, but it really happens. Next, I play two abscission, one imagining. Uh, abscissions, whatever. I side out the second abscission all the time. Keep in mind that Obsidian is the typically the uh, look. You're playing three Kalarian. You're playing three three Room Heart. You're playing three Meek. Typically, the card you search is Obsidian. So to play multiple is redundant. And Imagining is the best card in this deck because you're playing a like going second. You want to make sure you also of course, I'm, I do main the one reframing. The post to Gov, I'm probably gonna remove the reframing and side it because the post to Gov, you're putting up six negates without reframing. So reframing is just icing on the cake. Uh, Obsidian is all right. Like it's a good card, of course, but people are not playing Book of Moon anymore. Uh, it loses that value, and it, it, it's a good card, but it's not, like, game-changing. You're searching it a lot anyways, and I do side out. I'll, I'll get to siding patterns as well before we finish the main deck. Because uh, the siding pattern is very specific for almost the entire meta, because the way the side deck is, is just genius. It's made for, for every single deck in the meta instantly, and you know exactly what you take out. Uh, and it's similar for most of the meta decks, because the way we, we engineered the side deck. Now for defensive cards, on top of the five Fenrirs that you already play, but keep in mind that the five Fenrirs, they are very specific combo uh, as well as go second cards, which, which is vital. I, like, I'm trying to play as many of these as humanly possible. Cards that, that stop an interruption or two, like that could go plus one going second. So whether it's going to stop one or two of their interruptions, like a card they must deal with no matter what. I'm trying to play as many of those, but also combo that are combo cards in its own right. Cards like this, cards like Talents, cards like Thrust. So post side deck, I have five, six, seven, I have ten board breakers with a three thrust. Now these are the seven main deck options. The thrust I am siding. But post side, you have these ten. So these ten post side are in your deck, but they, they uh are either combo cards or board breakers. Any combination of these with actual engine is just nuts combined with the actual board breakers so i play seven other defensive cards going second is droplet droplet is the number one best defensive card in this meta without question there's no rise heart this card gets absurd value highly recommend in almost every single deck hand traps suck dog shit please stop playing them they're literally doo-doo you'll break any board to econ econ is so 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 good there's so many uh i as you guys know, I was first dueling book for a while. I stopped playing dueling books. I'm probably like fucking 10th now. But one of the most played decks I played against, Tier Limit. I was expecting a shit ton of Tier Limit. And there's so many other matchups. There's no matchup Econ is bad against, except Purely, which is already free as it is. That deck's dog shit. So Econ, there's so many stuff that target. Soliac, whatever, Metanoise, all those stuff. Uh, just generically, uh, any Thunder card or anything they do. The second they target Fenrir, the second they target your interruption, you just chain Econ. The second they like you use Scareclaw Arrival, you use Scareclaw Right Card, search Arrival, your opponent's like, ha oh, ha, I know Manadium. Manadium has no extenders. They don't know they don't know I play 15 plus. I'm gonna just book a moon, or I'm gonna Fenrir this Scareclaw Right Card. Chain Econ, book, take your Fenrir, Fenrir back, search my Scareclaw. Get fucked. This deck's insane. And lastly, for the last defensive card is two Imperm. Now the only reason I put two Imperm in here is I did expect. Uh, it was a remote regional, so I expected a lot of shitter decks like fucking Labyrinth uh, or Flu and stuff like that. So it was Book of Eclipse, but instead of Book of Eclipse, I opted for Imperm. Now, the reason why there's some two loves in this deck is, I'll tell you right now, the difference of Imperm, Econ, Talents, it's not that, like, if you know you're going second, Talents is by far the best one, of course. 
but you don't know if you're going first or second. And no one's playing hand traps. So talents almost just become stuck in your hand. The only hand traps people are main decking are Nib and Ash. And you don't know if they're going to always have it. And this deck breaks through boards anyways going first. Multiple hand, uh, against, sorry, multiple hand traps. So I wanted to have a big difference in terms of variety of, of go second cards. Because they're not absurdly better than the other. And having one Econ and one Imperm is dramatically better than two Econs or two Imperms. Having one Talents, one Econ is dramatically better than two Talents or two Econs. Does that make sense? It's dramatically better. The only difference is Droplet. With Droplet, it's just by and afar the best go second card or go first card that you could main deck. Now, if it's post side, I'm playing three Talents. I, I'm not in this list. I don't, want, I don't want to side the third, but that's different. But for just generically first or second, the, the power difference of these cards are like a Book of Eclipse. I put Book of Eclipse as the fifth card of these to main deck. Thrust is really bad. I do not like ma maining Thrust at all unless you're playing Kashtira. Uh, it's not Kashtira. Unless you're playing Unchained, which could get the trap to be a combo extender for you. So I'm playing 14 go second cards, but really seven that are nine that are actually because the Kashtiras don't count. So that's 40. Uh, now, as far as uh, side deck, I'm going to get to the side deck because it's very vital in terms of side patterns. Is three Thrust. Absolutely ridiculous. You need to be playing this. Duster. Two Lightning Storm, three Evenly. Okay, now you see these nine. There is no deck that I could think of that these nine are not broken against. Now imagine you're going second, okay? Imagine you're going second. You can name me any deck you want. This goes in against 90% of decks. And don't say some doo-doo deck like Salamangre. They don't activate monster effects on my turn because they're dog shit. So I don't play the thrust in that matchup. But that's, that's just about it. For 90% of decks, I want you to see these. In fact, these cards are so powerful, I even side out Econ and Imperm to make sure I have as much engine as humanly possible. So I want you guys to see this and tell me if you if you understand why I 2 would everyone. Keep in mind, you're playing a 40-card deck. You have these 9, you have these 3, that's 12. You're playing 2 Talents, that's 14. You're, you're playing all these going 2nd. And you're playing 5 Fenrirs. So you're going 2nd, and you have 19, like bombs that your opponent must deal with they must or, or or they get fucked and then you got 21 combo pieces and these combo pieces are all one to two card combos similarly because you guys see this math now? i know i'm a genius you're sitting there thinking trip you're a genius i know so on additionally these bottom 10 are not just go second you'll think 19 is an absurd amount of cards to have going second these bottom these bottom 10 these bottom 10 are very specifically combo pieces. So going second, let's say you have some hand of, this is a very typical hand. You have these three going second, all right? You also have a Thrust, you have a Fenrir, and just any generic combo card, whatever, even Vices, who cares? You're going second here, okay? Bro, this, these two are not uh, like gonna clear boards. They are official, this is officially Rota. This is officially Terraforming. This is officially Pot of Greed. This is officially Scareclaw Combo. Do you get what I'm saying? So. It, and now you see how droplets and econ have insane value. Like Fenrir, Resolve, like Fenrir, Imperm, Chain Droplet, Search Scare Cloud, Right Card, Negate something else, Summit, Attack per Game. One Light Heart equals 8,000 damage. So that's how you, tr you try and play it. It is just absolutely absurd, the power level of this going second. Like, I'm, I don't, like, bro, it's not a surprise. I tool it all, like, almost every single person I play against. Uh, and I'll continue to do so until I win YCS Indy. Next, so those are nine cards you put in the side. Uh, next, we also side. Oh, I forgot to show the main deck, Scarecrow Kashtira as well. I think I already showed that, but that wasn't the main deck, obviously. Next, you play one Herald of the Abyss. This only goes in. Like, you have 19 cards for going second. So, I do not put this in as the 20th, even against heavy combo. The cards that I... Oh, I'll show you guys the cards I side out, because there's... I'll, I'll get to that later. Uh, but, this specifically only goes in against Purely and nothing else. Nothing else. It's very rare that you're going to need 20 side deck cards. 19 is perfect. It just so happens to be because the cards you're siding out at that point are cards like Roomheart, cards like Vices, cards like Right Heart. You do not want to be removing those cards from the deck. I do remove one or two of them. I'll explain later, like when the side deck thing. But this only goes in for purely to make, so you have four answers to it. I also side deck one Underworld Goddess. So I actually side deck both of these. It makes uh, game two and three. Uh, but there won't be a game three against Pure League because you two hold them. It makes the, ne the next siding so damn easy that you physically cannot lose to that deck unless they draw a Droll. That's their only answer. 
They could hard with their six draws. They could draw Ash Nib. They're still getting fucked. It doesn't matter. They have put up zero interruptions other than uh, like that card. That is not. A, it's a non-issue. Uh, you're gonna put up literally ten monsters, and they, like, what are they gonna do? Shuffle two of them? Okay. Anyways, I have eight more. Under what goddess the other later. So that's how it is in there. And then one call by the grave, one twin saw, and one deep barrier. This is for going first. Twin saw and call by are needed to go in for going first every matchup, no matter what. Because you're either popping two or stopping their link of links from their with the graveyard effect. And this needs to be in there for Droll. I don't give a shit about any other hand trap, but this needs to stop Droll. Absolutely needs to stop Droll. The only way you lose is Droll. So until post of God, we only have called by to answer it. And I'm not playing cross a designator. Like, unless you're playing hand traps already, that like, please don't play that card. So it's a combination of these two, and the D barrier is in for the thrust. So if you're playing a deck that D barrier solos, you always put in D barrier and three thrust additionally with these. Always going first. And yeah. Uh, now I'm going to show you guys the extra deck. So the extra deck is two light heart. You need to play this. If you're playing one light heart, please block. I'm blocking you from life, bro. I'm never talking to you again. This deck needs two light heart. I'm cutting Baron to floor before I cut the second light heart. The second light heart, this, it's a mainstay. I can't stress this enough. This deck is not a deck without the second light heart. You're losing to one interruption without it. Required, mandatory, without question. Post Agav, pre Agav, pre Dune, pre everything. Play it. Cross Sheep, okay, you need it. Uh, this is typically your board you're going to use. Going first, you typically use all of these going first. Your end board ends up being. So you have five ways to Fenrir. You have two Imperm, two Econ, three Droplet. That's seven, that's 10, plus potentially talents removing your hands of 12. So you have 12 defensive cards that you, could, you have in your deck going first for like X, extra interruption. But additionally, it's going to be Apoloza, it's going to be Dispatter, it's going to be Baron, and it's going to be Reframing. So it's going to be these three with Reframing. That's four interruption. Well, this is the three. So three, four, five, Reframing, uh, six. Even if you want to consider Apoloza one or two. But then on top of that, you have 12 additional cards that go with non-engine as extra defensive cards. And the, all those defensive cards uh, pair with Apoloza so well. Cards like Econ and Droplet. So when your opponent enters battle phase and tries to attack into that Pelozo, this happens all the time. Even on DB Garnet channel, I had a video where I actually purposely allowed, I set him up in a scenario. Uh, I negated something I would never negate with that Pelozo just so I could bait him into entering battle to Droplet's his ass. Uh, so Apeloza and Droplet work so well because your opponent's always going to see Apeloza and try to enter battle. So you don't use all three negates of Apeloza. That's when you hit them with a the Droplet and the damage step and they get absolutely slapped. Uh, I'm going to go on with the rest of the links, though. I just want to show you the end board. So the, these links, you're going to go in first. Every turn one, you go into two light heart. Every single turn one is the best follow-up. Turn two as well. Uh, we have three more links. Dark, Unicorn, Axis Code. Mandatory. Mandatory. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to find a way to put this, play this in a gob as well. The amount of games that you solo win with these. The amount of times I was debarried and I just slapped them up. I did not give a shit about Synchro Summoning because you have Link Summoning and Fusion Summoning. And last time I checked, these two equal... Uh, 8,800 minimum plus whatever Astrolab pops and the unicorn shuffle spin back is is does come up and you get a free draw with it because you get the light heart summon from graveyard so you always get the free draw with the unicorn and it does come up this meta does have a lot of things that get shuffled you do need to play these don't play synchros dude this deck so many people play this deck with like 10 synchros you guys don't know what the heck you're doing look how many links I'm playing this is a link deck this is what this deck has always been so when you, you have a bunch of cards on there, your opponent has no answer. Like, it's, you have to pick your poison on how they're going to stop you. Pro tip, they can't. And Dark wins games on its own. Dark is required. You level modulate with Dark as well. Depending on the scenario you have, you special back so many cards from their grave that help you. And you could essentially synchro into anything you want accordingly with what they have in their graveyard. And th there's a lot of times where you, you, you Dark, you go into every single turn, by the way, because Lightheart is a Dark. So a lot of times, even before you really commit to your Manadiums or commit to something in your hand that you want to save, you go dark, dark, special, whatever the heck they have, and you unicorn a back row. And you access code something, and then let them in for maxis code. I don't give a shit. This is all bait. Or it's either OTK or bait. And then, all right, normal room heart later. You know what I'm saying? Or activate arrival, special room heart. Like, there's so many lines like that where these are just so vital that so, there's a real like, there's a reason I'm 2 0 everyone, guys. Like, like, you need these. Vital. Uh, and then I play uh, two Astrolab. Uh, where the heck did my other Astrolab go? Oh, uh, yeah. play. I don't know where it went. But play two Astrolab. You need to play two Astrolab. This is vital. Uh, three, like, you're playing three instead of one. One is not an option. It's really not. 
It's either two or three. Uh, I opt for two because when you go first, uh, when you go first, you're going to use one Astro Lad for your combo, and the second saves as a follow up. When you're going second, you use one for sure, and no matter what, and the second is like just in case. Oh, another big thing about Unicorn. A lot of the times, they're going to, the monster negation going second, they're going to negate the Vices Star Frost in hand. To be able to Unicorn spin vi Vices, uh, discard Vices is another reason you, you must play this card. Like, dude, it's vital. You need to play one Nightmare. You need to, no matter what. One of the Nightmares is the, is the game changer. This is multiple times. There's so many tricks in this deck. Whether it's always spe going second, you always special Meek in attack, never in defense. Because there's scenarios where the only way to trigger Meek, depending on their interruptions, if they're negating Rumar, neg negating Vices, is enter battle. Crash Meek, trigger Meek and Calarium. That's one trick. Another trick is if you can't get a second Vices to Grave or you can't get the first Vices to Grave, Dark, Unicorn, Spin, Astrolaud later. Uh, access. Like, like, vital. Dude, vital. This is another reason why Perlerino is so vital. Where a lot of times going into your combo, the only way to OTK is by getting access to Astrolaud. So you go into Vices of Matara, you search Perlerino, because you already use Calarium and Phobia. You go Perlerino, search Vices, Dark, Unicorn, discard the Vices because you already used the effect because they negated. You're playing through six negates, remember? So what, you think they're just going to allow Vices to be on the field? Hell no. So Unicorn, boom. Astrolaud, pop. Something else generic. Astrolaud, because you're going to have a lot of monsters on the field. Access code, Astrolaud. See you later, Bozo. Now for the Synchro count. You guys, oh, this is the second. I found it. The Synchro count. You're going to notice how little Synchros I play. I'm going to show you guys the ones that are absolutely vital. You need to play Vesas and Matara, absolutely. You need to play uh, Axel and Gristardos, absolutely. You need to play uh, Baron, absolutely. You need to play Bissa of the Spatter, absolutely. You need to play Crimson Dragon, absolutely. There's a lot of lines where Crimson Dragon is the difference of having Bissa Baron. Crimson Dragon is like the glue that holds the extra deck together, it really is. It helps you get to anything you want at any time. There's times where you have Matara, you can do this into this. You can do yeah, Baron, you go this into this. This gets to these two, vital. These two are you're going into every single time. These two you get through whether from just this or from this. So you always got to end on these two. And the spatter recycles the vices, which allows you to double Astrolaud many times. These are the vital. So this ends up being 14 cards. The 15th card I'm playing, uh, you don't need to play Chen Ying. I don't play a third Synchro 10. It's Dude, to say, like, your end board is unbreakable. To say you need more interruptions is Copium. Your end board is, is 2400 Apoloza, Baron de Floor, Bissio de Spatter, and Counter Trap. No one is breaking through that. So additionally, you have 12 go second defensive cards. And post side deck, you have a Scareclaw Twin Saw that's in the graveyard. So whenever Apollosa gets enough value, you banish, because Baron's going to pop the Twin Saw a lot of the times, or you just have a Scareclaw in field, and you just banish the Twin Saw. Your opponent cannot activate links. So no one's breaking through that. So to, to add an extra Chang Ying is just, dude, it's ridiculous. And going second, there's no scenario where you're like, hmm, I would... I will definitely win this game if I, instead of summoning my Baron to floor, I'm going to summon my Chen Ying, and this will definitely win me the game. That is so ridiculous if you think about it. No scenario going second, are you summoning Chen Ying over Baron? It's ridiculous. There's just no shot. And so if you're able to summon two Synchro 10s going second, that's the other thought. Oh, yeah, but Chen Ying helps me win going second. Or helps me OTK. No, dude, if you need Chen Ying to OTK, you don't know what the heck you're doing. I'll tell you what OTK is. 5300 attack that destroys pops everything on the field twice that's what otk is shuffle pop two kakashi so pop two with dark and earth shuffle three right phobia four baron pop five astrolaud pop six second astrolaud seven like you're popping everything on the field this is how you otk dude not changing it, it, or chaos angel like this that's another card there's no scenario where going second you're gonna want to go baron over chaos angel the only time a synchro 10 comes up is when going first you exhausted all your synchro ten, synchro tens. Like going first, you typically go into four of these five. So uh, typically, or sometimes all five. Uh, Crimson Dragon is only one left in your ash deck. So going second, you're like, oh man, I wish I had a third synchro ten. Uh, sorry, when you're going first, when you're going first, and they somehow find a way to break your board, bro. There's still no scenario where another synchro ten comes up. In that scenario, if you uh, had an apple full board, these come up to actually go for OTK. So then you, you're still just going. Access code, Vicious Astrolog, nothing changes. But the 15th card I'm playing my extra deck is Stardust Dragon, because going second, there are some very cool scenarios where if you could set this up, uh, you just chain this and this, and then you get into a Baron that's unaffected. This also helps you play through Nib Hand Trap. Nib Hand Trap is how I ended up losing the final final round. Uh, Nib Hand Trap is a vital combo, but if you're able to get into this, this, and get Baron unaffected, you're beating Nib Hand Trap every game. That's the deck. Uh, 
Post the Gov, there's no space for this. It is the 15th card in the deck. This is the Synchro 6, Trilaskuda, uh, which you, you do need to, need to play. And then as far as SP and how that's going to shift into this deck, I'm debating what I'm going to remove. You can't remove any of the five Synchros. It might be Apollosa. It might be one of, the, one of these two. Uh, it might be Unicorn because SP can act as a Unicorn in the sense of shuffling a card that can be destroyed. Then going into access, but it's debatable. Uh, I'll let you guys know more. But that is the video, guys. Absolutely insane deck. Make sure to get your Synchro playmats in the description below. This deck is the best deck next format and this format. Thank you guys for watching the video. See you guys next video. Peace.